Welcome to the ACS Technical Advisory Board podcast series, where we talk all things tech including data, cyber, AI, blockchain, and Internet of Things. Meet your host, Dr. David Cook, Vice President of the Australian Computer Society's Technical Boards. David is a technology advocate dedicated to advances and progression of computing and human-computer interaction. In today's episode, David will be talking with ACS Cyber Security Committee member, Christoph Kazma. Join us as we discuss the big changes in the cyber domain, phishing scams, and what we need to do to protect ourselves from deep fakes. As the head of solutions at ASE, Christoph Kazma has over 30 years of experience in the technology industry. His history in cybersecurity is both extensive and diverse, and he's a technology evangelist in helping organizations with security and helping them in the future. Christoph, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. Christoph, you are known as a technology evangelist. What's the big change that's taking place in the cyber domain? That's an interesting one. Um, I think the whole concept of deep fake, the concept of spam, the concepts of cyber criminals being in our face more often has changed very quickly. It's dramatic how fast it's been adopted. The, the biggest concern around that is the education that needs to come from a broader community sense. Um, and that's not just for organisations, but also for the elderly, especially, I mean, if you consider our network of friends and family, the amount of times that the elderly are targeted recently, um, and, and you see that through a mix of both, you know, business uh, associations, such as banking, um, you know, commerce, Medibank, for example. Um, and then you start seeing text messages where they're alerting you to, mum, I've lost my phone, please contact me on this number. Um, and that's that evolution has become so quickly adopted due to the pandemic, people being at home, technology being more available uh, and making it somewhat easier for cyber criminals to be able to access us anytime, anywhere. We've come a long way, haven't we, in terms of things like, uh, you know, old people used to get an email saying you've won, you know, uh, 10 million pounds in the lottery and you go, hang on, pounds, that doesn't quite look right. And now the, the cyber scams are more like, well, you know, you've, you've won third prize and you, your prize is a cup of coffee, click here. Mm. You know, cyber criminals are getting smarter in that way. The realism is really starting to, to take hold. The other problem with that is... The availability of the technology means that they can adapt their language as well. So it used to be quite easy to determine a scam, a deep fake, or um, an email that you knew had no relevance. Uh, these days, they look more original. They speak in a natural language, which is very difficult to differentiate between the real, real emails and fakes. Um, and unfortunately, you, you're right. They've targeted them. They're, they're figuring out how to be more adaptive and target specifically to a broader audience. Mm. Mm. I don't think um, the the prince of Saudi Arabia is interested in leaving his great fortunes to us anymore. No, I agree. I think I think that that um, um, time when we had a lot of uh, interesting things, people from Africa and people from you know saying different things for him. But and yet, interestingly, I think romance scams are still hot topic. Um, they may not be a Nigerian lover, but they'll be your friend. <laughs> yeah, the irony about social media um, creating the opportunity for that, you know, there there isn't a massive increase. I think it's somewhere in the percentage of 60% of, you know, scams that are occurring are around those sort of social media events. People feeling lonely, needing connection, um, just, you know, the simple language, uh, I'm willing to connect with you, mm. is enough for people to go, I'm interested, I'll... I'll Take a take a whiff at it, rather than what you used to do, which was no, this isn't legit and delete. Yeah. And the the ever growing presence of um, fake social media accounts too, like the amount of those that have increased, is exponential. You know, you've got these accounts where they're taking photos, and it could be a paid actor, we don't know. It could be you know, AI, etc. Um, where they've got followers of you know, a couple of thousand, so it looks like it's a legitimate account. Then they start talking to you and they reach out. Uh, I've had a number of colleagues, friends, associates tell me about how they've had these attempts and, yeah, it's somewhat disconcerting. So let's talk about the future of deep fakes because now that we've got chat GPT, now that we've got large language models and, and the new emerging part, of course, which is the visual language models which are driving all of these capabilities in deep fakes, 
we, we obviously we can expect to see change, but I just wonder what what are the steps you think we need to be telling people to take to to either be armed or aware of how do you deal with the deep fake and, and what do you do if you see something and you go, I don't think that's me or I don't think that's my friend. What what's mm. the steps do you take from there? Education is probably the most crucial. Um, the one thing I'd always tell the people is validate. No matter how much you think, um, and we've seen this from a recent event where you know a Hong Kong trader moved off millions of dollars on a VC call that was a deep fake because they presented as the CEO. Um, the concern I have, especially from my perspective as a parent, is putting photos of your kids online. Um, they're not old enough to vote to be on or off social media. Um, so being mindful about that, uh, that can be used against them. Now, if you've seen the Deutsche Telekom uh, ad that they did about four years ago, which literally demonstrated how they took photos of their parents' um, photos that they put online, then modelled it into a child that was 15 years later. Um, and that just is enough of a visual for most people to realise that the ability for people to model and deep fake these photos of your children shouldn't be online. It just it should be a detractor for you to do that. So what do you make of the recent comments around, I think, um, Meta are trying to hand over the space in terms of saying that certain organisations should take more care about their social media platforms and, and, and pass on the responsibility to parents. Is that a realistic option for kids who are hungry to jump onto any kind of social media that they can? Do you know the, the biggest problem about this, David, is that if you think about when we were kids, school and social media stopped at 3pm. You could go home, you could disconnect. The the opportunity and the challenge that we have at the same time is that you are always on. So social media means that you can connect and you want to be included. Um, that's just the whole point of it. It literally is like a drug. It, it addicts you. And so as kids, that dopamine hit creates a need or a want. Um, the issue with that is that they aren't aware of what that will affect or create for them down the track. Um, especially when you talk about you know party photos. People are putting party photos up, having a great time. That could affect your future in you know career, for example. Um, people can once the photo is on the internet, it can't be deleted, mm. especially on social media. One thing I will always say to kids: if it's on there, it will never disappear. So remember that before you do anything and you put something up, think about that. Um, but that in itself is another reason for parents to have those conversations. And the New Zealand government actually did a really good. Um, ad about that, if you saw that about probably the same time a few years ago, around kids' online behaviours and having those conversations early. It's it's not something that it's an easy conversation to have, but at the same time, we need to have those conversations early with our children, broader sense and their friends, to be mindful of the fact of what they're putting up can potentially affect them in the future, but also us as well, as a parent, as a group, as a community. Thinking about where we're at right now what does the future look like in terms of the future and not just social media but the the, the inclusion of all these things as you say the 24 7 version of everything what what does it look like in in 2030 are we any safer have we got better solutions or are we just more of the same look the realistic um, essence is that technology will be increasing at speed and it's not going to slow down we've only just scratched the surface of what ai can do um, if you look at the ability for us to be, uh, you know, neural links, for example, they're, they're potentially going to be commonplace within the next five or so years, and you can potentially do that. Google Glass didn't eventuate the way we were expecting it to, but technologies like that will will become immersed more and more. We will start to have wearables that we will disengage with our phones. We will start to have technology where we're actually more one with AI. Well. The concern with that is, you, you made your point, we're always going to be on. It's going to start creating an always-on culture and we need to learn how to disengage and to turn off. Detox, digital detox, you know, teaching our kids and showing that and not just our kids but also ourselves, practice about how do we digital detox nightly to make sure that we get that opportunity for our brains to slow down and reset. We're always expected to be on, respond, text message, chat, group, Slack, Teams, you name it, they're always capable of being able to connect with you. And it's up to us to then go, all right, we're going to have to disengage from this. Christoph Kesmer, thanks for your time today. Appreciate it. Thanks, David.
To find out more about how the ACS is powering Australia's technology brilliance, visit us at our website, Facebook or LinkedIn. Want to get involved with the ACS technical boards? Email us at tab at acs.org.au and tell us a bit about yourself. Join us for more thought leadership, ideas, and information through our other podcasts on the ACS YouTube, Facebook, or on LinkedIn.